Dixie Blues. It happens every night. Every old night. And I ain't never met a riverboat dealer that could ever be a friend of mine. I have not. Summer heat never treats me kind. It leaves trouble on my mind. So I'm bidding farewell, putting in my notice, and I'll see you at another time. This highway does not know my name, and I don't care. Nope. I don't care. Heading my way for another plate. No, I don't. Three good tires I need to add a line about and a truck leaking old. Just a white line. Gypsy getting out of Mississippi with just enough gas to get low budget live. The not so live variety, and we're back. We're back in the low budget live bar and grill after many, 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 many days gone. It's good to see everybody. And if you heard that new remix of Low Budget Live, my 2022 Chevy Silverado High Country's got an oil leak and it's just licking oil everywhere. But I ain't been able to slow down long enough to get it looked at. So I'm just putting oil in it like it's a 1974 Buick. And if you remember, if you're keeping up, my last Chevrolet that I had GMC exploded on the side of the road uh, on the way to ICAST. So I'm batting a thousand. I'm batting a thousand on the uh, GM products. Good gosh. Uh, don't build them like I used to. I'm going to have to drive the 85 Blazer everywhere I go. Oh, uh, welcome. Welcome. It is good to be back. I was just uh, thinking every time I leave here, it's so hard and you, it looks simple. You know, a lot of people often imitated, uh, you know, never duplicated this low budget live setup here. People think it's easy, I think, but uh, <laughs> it's very, it's kind of complicated. Uh, the more pieces of equipment we add to this and when I take it all on the road to go to the amazing Bassmaster Classic, it is, uh, it's kind of aggravating putting it all back up and I'm checking. And so if something doesn't look or sound right today, like it uh, normally does, you know, uh, blame the classic. I don't know. Blame blame somebody. Blame anybody other than me. But this is the podcast for Monday, April the 1st, and this is the April Fool's edition. No fooling around on this one, though, guys. No fooling around. Buckle up. Buckle up. We are uh, got a lot to uh, got a lot to cover. Um, and and gosh, I mean, there's just I, I don't even know how to the 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 jokes write themselves. The the bass fishing world just keeps on giving. You think this is you know it's been kind of been kind of slow uh, the last couple weeks, and then here we are. Uh, we've got plenty of things to talk about, other than like forward facing sonar. And I say to that. Um, first, I want to say I, I did not get to do a podcast when I got back from uh, from the classic. Uh, been busy been very busy obviously we are not we announced at the classic the launch of southern boating supply my own company that i'm working on with some good friends of mine and uh as part of uh and i'm, I'm a part of uh, a bigger a bigger thing called woods to water the woods to water outdoor company go follow it on social media go follow southern boating supply as well I greatly appreciate it uh we have a rep group that's on the uh, the outdoor side of things, rods, reels, gill clothing, different different things, Bahio sunglasses that I'm involved in. We also have an apparel company that my dude Fat Cat Newton is heading up there, the Woods to Water Outdoor Company Apparel. He released a few things at the Classic, more to come. He's got some really great designs he's been working on. And then the, kind of the third arm of that is Southern Boating Supply, which is my baby. It's my baby. It's something I've wanted to do for a very, very long time. Y'all have seen the teaser videos. Well, now it's here. And uh, I get chills just talking about it. It's located in Lawrenceburg, Tennessee. We'll be calling on uh, boat manufacturers, boat dealers, and then to all you wonderful people, we'll be selling e-commerce as well. Got a lot of things coming, a lot of things we're working on I'm super excited about. I got a notebook full of crazy ideas and things that are happening. And we're already doing, we're already doing some business out there on the, on the OEM side. Um, and I'm grateful for each and every OEM that's kind of let me come by and have meetings and, and things. It's, uh, I think it pays off, uh, 20 years of hard work to set you up for the next 20 years of your life kind of thing. But man, I'm grateful for all the kind words, all the well wishes. And, uh, it, it's amazing 
We're going to have some very cool merch. I like, I like this hat. I actually didn't design this hat, but, uh, a good friend of mine, Todd Hammond, one of my partners in this, in this crazy world, uh, in this business and a really good friend of mine, he had these made and, uh, I really haven't taken this one off. It's been really fishy too. I've been catching, catching a lot of fish wearing this hat. So we'll have some, uh, we'll have some things on the website coming up soon, but I, I promise you that if I learned anything in almost 20 years of dealing with, uh, dealing with people, it's that people matter and y'all y'all know I get passionate and you know that I, I what I care about what I don't care about essentially on this show and uh and, and people do matter man people matter and if you choose to spend your hard-earned money with a company customers should matter I'm, I'm, I'm a big proponent on customer service always have been if somebody buys something from you they put their faith in you they put their trust in you that that is what you said it was going to be and if, if the product is not that you'll stand by also if they order it, that's going to ship on time and, and look things happen in that world but man I, i've just i've dealt with a lot of that over recent years and i want to strive to be a lot better than that i want to strive to be innovative and uh we got some really cool stuff coming so thank you so much for all the kind words on that um uh, Launch that Saturday at the Classic, kind of in all the melee and the crazy, but here we are, Southern Boating Supply, your anchor for quality boat parts. Shameless plug. Shameless plug, but uh, make sure you're following all the social media so you can get the updates, and I'll probably talk about it on here too because the low lifers uh, got my back, that is for sure, in life. Let's talk Bassmaster Classic. Did not get to do one of these right after the Classic, and uh, like I said, didn't have a voice much either after uh, after all the shenanigans. But I, I just got to say, this was my first year kind of being a free agent and roaming the Classic and getting to really spend time working for the people that support me, like Baitworks, like Pro Guide Batteries, like Express Boats. And I saw so many of you low-lifers, and uh, I signed a baby. I mean, what are we talking about here? You know, I signed a baby. But I, I think I say this every year, but this year more than ever, it was overwhelming uh, to know that there's legitimately an army of y'all out there. And, uh, and, and it's so funny for every low life or dude that walks up, there's a wife or a girlfriend that's like, God, I hate your voice. Or, man, I love your voice. I hear it every week. <laughs> but the, the significant others are like, this guy watches you all the time. And, uh, but the amount of young low lifers, and I apologize for the terrible language that happens on the show sometimes, but I, I met, I met a lot of up and coming low lifers, but, but just so many conversations at the classic. And it's, it's always just a great, um, a, a great event for that for me, because I just stare at the camera. I, I give my opinion, you know, you see comments and things, but meeting the people that make it all happen, it's incredible. So three days of that at the expo, but then the low budget live in the express booth. And I'm so grateful that express lets me have that chaos in their booth on Saturday, every year they were releasing a new boat there and uh, super fun, man, getting to do that. It's, it's crazy. It's chaos. There's it's a uh, roll, a uh, roll, a de- uh, roll a guest, I guess you should say uh, my buddy, Clay Connor, shout out Clay from express. Uh, he sends them up there. And so it's like quick fire. It's so much fun. Uh, and then we took it to the hunt club in Tulsa, Oklahoma that night. And it, it was funny when we got there, they said, Hey, we canceled a cover band for tonight to let you guys have this. I hope you bring a crowd and boy, oh boy, did they eat those words. They were sold out of beer at about nine o'clock. You low lifers were there at about five when we were trying to set up getting rowdy and, uh, by far at the hill in Knoxville last year was fantastic, but by far, the craziest gathering and, and, you know, my goodness, the fat rascals, Ryan Engelman on lead guitar, Shannon Wheeler on fiddle, Ben Ballou on bass and my buddy, John Simpson on drums. We played music all night. Many of y'all were there. It was, uh, it was a night to remember. There's no doubt about it. Shannon and Shannon and Ryan did their damn thing. John crushed it. Ben Ballou crushed it. And I just tried to keep up. It was, uh, it was a fantastic evening of music. Everybody seemed like they had a great time. There were so many industry people there. And the most overwhelming thing for me, whether it was a low lifer or uh, an industry low lifer that would come up to me and and uh, and thank me for what I do and thank me for sticking up for the little guy and, and all these things that they do matter to me. 
And um, it was overwhelming, man. We had we had Gussie there, Bassmaster Classic Champions. We had half the Elite Series field. If you were there, you know it was uh, it was it was there was some heavy hitters in that room and that night. I kept looking around, I'm like, holy crap, there's so and so from the stage. But unfortunately, and fortunately, because I love to play, I didn't get to to mix and mingle with everybody that much. It was a wild night. It was a wild night, other than like. Uh, it was hard to get to the bathroom. That place was not expecting us <laughs> like that. They weren't ready. And uh, I may or may not have uh, peed in the alley like a homeless person a couple times during the night. I, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Uh, I think uh, the statute of limitations has probably ran out on that by now. But uh, I did indeed, uh, like a crackhead, pee on the street at Tulsa. I don't care to tell you that. I feel like that's been done by somebody in a band before probably. But uh just an awesome, awesome week, man. And and while all that's going on, you got a bass tournament. And I, I said this on the um, on the live we did with Watson and Trey from the Hunt Club. The classic week has become so weird for me because I've got all the LBL stuff going on that I honestly don't. And I'm so busy during the days running around talking to people that I don't even get to check bass track very often. I don't get to look at the standings. And and after day one. It was like 1.30 in the morning. I finally laid down on Friday into Saturday morning there, and I'm at the hotel and winding down, and I finally got to look at the standings from day one. I, I did not <laughs> I did not even – it's so crazy, but there is. There's so much going on. It's it's two events in itself, right? And uh, Justin Hamner goes wire to wire. Congrats to Justin. Justin is a uh, – he's a real one in this industry. I uh, know a lot about his story um, through my, my friends at American Bait Works. Uh, shout out Walt Roberts and crew and, uh, and Miss Val, but great people. And it was cool. I got to see them. Uh, their guy won the classic and they were staying at the same hotel as us. It was, it was really, it was really cool to see that. Uh, it's kind of like when Christy won in the express, seeing the express folks, like just that emotion, like our dude pulled it off. It was, it was very, uh, because they've had Justin's back, the, uh, the American Bait Works crew for a long time. And, and I know so many of his, like Falcon Boats and, and, uh, the Stephen Waller and crew and, and, uh, just had to be just a cool freaking moment, man. The, the, your dude just won the, you placed your bets on this guy and he just won. Not only he just caught the biggest bass in Bassmaster Live history at Lake Fork and 11 pounder, but, just went on to win the Bassmaster Classic, 33 years old. And Hamner, seeing Miss K for the Alabama Bass Trail, so many Alabama Bass Trail folks have fished against Justin. He still fishes the 100s with us, and I've competed against him. Fantastic angler, fantastic person. And but just to see all these people super excited was, uh, was very cool. So congrats to Justin and his family. I hope you get that Milo's Tea sponsorship. Y'all all blow up milos to get just in that sponsorship he deserves it i mean if not darian missed an opportunity he needs to wrap that boy's boat y'all sweet tea every time he take a sip it needs to be y'all not milos come on darian get it together if you're going to be successful you should listen to me darian but uh justin hamner congratulations and listen he does he's doing the podcast uh podcast merry-go-round as i call it and y'all know me I ain't ever going to walk in a straight line <laughs> right behind everybody else. I've seen these, I've seen them all posted. He's done them all. And, and, uh, honestly, like, I don't, I don't know what else to talk to Justin about. Like I, I, uh, I'm proud for him, but y'all know, I don't have the classic champ on very often for that reason, just cause it's just even shows that like nobody cares about will somehow get a minute with the classic guy and they ask all the same questions and whatever. So, uh, I've seen him I'm doing a lot of them, but shout out to Panger and I text Panger this. He got the first one Monday afternoon, dude, that ain't easy. That ain't easy. Cause bass is still shuffling folks around all over the place. And, and there's a lot going on the afternoon after he won and Panger went live with him on bass talk live. So shout out Panger. And also want to say this about Matt, Matt, Frank Scalish. Frank's one of my fishing heroes, man. Uh, been around Frank and competed against Frank for many years since I was a kid. And he's just such a such a good dude. But but I will say this. Two of the first people through through the door at the hunt club to hang were Matt and Frank. And they stayed all for all night. And um dude, that's how it should be. I, I know, listen, I I I am um, you know, we're all competitors, I guess, in the, you know, the the few that are 
consistent with this and, and been after it for a very long time. And look, man, I was new to the space several years ago in, in 2017 and, and, uh, Mark Jeffries and I butted heads. I, that story, I told that on BTL. I, I respect Mark a lot and what he did for the industry. Uh, but we did butt heads, obviously. And uh, Matt, I, it just it's it's cool to me to look up and see Matt there. And um, he's good people, man. And I know, and look, man, y'all BTLers out there, I see y'all stacking up. I see his post. Y'all y'all show up and show out. He's always like. I can't believe you do all this live stuff. <laughs> it stresses Matt out. It stresses me out uh, until until it's up and going, and then and it's a lot of fun. But it is kind of stressful. But Matt's always like every year, like, dude, you're you're a glutton for punishment. <laughs> but uh, but shout out to BTL man. He does it. Uh, he does a fantastic show, and uh, and he got the first Justin Hamner in, interview. Um, but yeah, again, thanks to the Fat Rascals, the band, <laughs> thanks to the uh, to the Low Lifers, thanks to the Hunt Club for hosting us. Fort Worth will be uh, be crazy again. We'll find you know we were at the Library Bar and Grill in, in uh, Fort Worth last year, and I think we've outgrown that. I really do. I, I'm looking at other venues, and I've got some crazy ideas. We got a year to pull it off, and we'll see what happens. So thank you all. None of this is possible without you. Whether it's Southern Boating Supply, Woods to Water, or the podcast. Alabama Bass Trail, MPFL, everything that I get to be a part of in life is because of the low lifers. Like, understand that. And I do not take that for granted. And uh, I'm going to keep giving you 110% of everything I got. All right. I need a, I need a, um, here we go. This is the right sound effect for this. All right. Let's move on. Here we go. One more time. That is the alarm for the April Fool's Awards. <laughs> April Fool's Awards. We're going to hand out some, uh, some. it's like the Dundies, uh, the Dunder Mifflin Dundies. I wish I had some, uh, Celsius and get a Celsius for this. Uh, these are the fool. Th- these are March Fools, but we just clicked over. And I feel like, uh, and, they're, and they're fools all the time, I think, most likely. But, uh, First and foremost, we got to start at the top. I know why you're here. I know why a lot of y'all are peeking through the blinds today that don't even listen to the show most of the time. Uh, James Watson will be on this show April the 8th. The April 8th episode will be James Watson. Okay. Uh, James is a dear friend of mine. We have been in the trenches in this deal together, and he's given us the LBL exclusive on all the – bull and freaking mother uh, of what just happened okay so james watson will not be on this episode some of y'all commented uh, i'm recording this on easter weekend james had stuff going on man he didn't he didn't see this coming he didn't see the timing of it he and i talked on on friday i was out on the water with my boys my phone was melting in half people were texting me did you see this people were tagging me on social media comments and i appreciate it but I was out enjoying the day with my kid. I had people, man, you need emergency press conference. And had I been here and had all that, man, the stuff wasn't even set up. But James could not record. James could not record and already had a guest lined up for today. And uh, that was very much, and, and we're going to talk to him here in just a few minutes, that I'm very much looking forward to talking to. We've been going back and forth about it for a while. And uh, it's not fair I, I don't cancel guests. Like that's not what I do. Like if I if I book somebody to do the show, I'm respectful enough of their time. No matter what Boyd Duckett throws out there in the world, uh, I'm not that thirsty for views. There are a lot of people that are. I've seen people that don't even talk about controversial anything. They're so vanilla and PC and whatever in all of this stuff. And now they're like, well, what do you think about the James Watson DQ? Hoping to get some views. Everybody's trying to play off of it. It's like forward facing sonar. It is what it is, man. Uh, y'all know I've been running my mouth since 2017, saying whatever the hell I wanted. So uh, we we seven years into this at this point. Uh, it's a it's a roller coaster ride. I get that when you do controversial stuff, that the views spike and whatever. But dude, we've built a loyal loyal platform here with loyal loyal low lifers. And so, yeah, I mean, we'll bring you the James Watson, and I appreciate everybody wanting us to talk about it, and it will be a doozy. 
it will be a doozy. But uh, James is going to – shout out to James for giving us first first right of refusal on that, as he, as he called it, his real estate ass. <laughs> he called me. He's like, Lucas, you got first right of refusal. Um, and honestly, he wasn't as – he's not as hot about it as, as – uh, like, he wins in this. But let, let's get into this real quick. Real quick, because it all centers around this show, and that's what kills me about all the videos getting made and the posts and things is like it all centers right here, and that's egotistical of me, narcissistic, as my buddy uh, uh, Steve, I uh, forget what the hell his name is, I don't care, down in Florida, I uh, forget what his name is. Um, yeah, he's called me narcissist a couple times, uh, try to get views, doesn't work. Um, he's an April Fool. Uh, but it all kind of started here, man. We, we bragged about it. Unfortunately, this podcast got him fined 10 grand. And, and as Watson said in his, uh, in his video that he posted the other night, uh, he was financially profiled. There's no doubt, man. I said it when he got fined for speaking up on this show and we read texts between him and him and, uh, him and Boyd and, um, that were just, it's just right in line, right? Like Boyd plays the villain very well. He's a polarizing dude. He enjoys it though. Like he, and he's not a dummy. Like understand that he's an April fool, but he's no dummy. He knows where this is all headed. Now, I think it's headed in the right direction for James more so than BPT and MLF for a lot of reasons. And let, let's talk about that. I've said on this show multiple times, controlling the narrative. I said that about my former employer. And and one of the guys that just recently got fired uh, from there that was in charge of that company was buddies with some of the guys from MLF. So it kind of all ties together. <laughs> it makes sense because they're all just ridiculous at business and somehow just fall into piles of money um, and just overall not good people. So I think that that for me – it, going back to like 2019, right? Let's let's do this. I wish I had my, my poster board. So they let, uh, it, I think it had 3,500 views at the time, podcast I did in this garage, like get under their skin so bad, so bad that they did indeed try to get me fired, right? Let's go back. Like that's important to say because that tells you the integrity and qual- uh, character of people like Jim Wilburn and Boyd Duckett. Now, Boyd was not in the middle of that that I know of, Jim Wilburn cannot handle. He's a millionaire from Tulsa, Oklahoma. I can't believe he didn't come out to the hunt club. But anyways, it's neither here nor there. Uh, he's a piece of garbage. There's no doubt about that. But but he tried to he tried to get me fired from TH Marine. And, and and he did so because the former CEO there was in his was in his boys' club, right? He took them to the Super Bowl. Jim took them to the Super Bowl. It's how he ensured a TH Marine sponsorship, took them to the PGA championship took him all whining and dining and all this stuff uh and i did talk on the show about oh i was so glad that they they had my back dude they had my back because i sold 15 million dollars worth of stuff a year and he didn't want to look like a jackass for firing me over something about mlf and a podcast truly like that's bottom line i said some sentimental stuff at the time but the truth of the matter is uh there was one guy there in that company that had my back and his name is greg Bowie. And he's like a father to me the other guy not so much okay because he was still running with Jim. And and Jim Wilburn gave his son an internship to, like, do something on an MLF production to ensure they kept their sponsorship, right? So just understand that. Like, because people are like, well, man, they're obviously not doing that bad. They're not doing that bad because they got sponsors. There's a lot of backdoor BS that goes on around all this. So understand all of that as a whole. That's like sidebar, sidebar, sidebar. But... Now I can finally talk about some of this stuff, but like, that's what you're dealing with. You know, you wine and dine the main guys from pure fishing. Like you're going to get a check from them. Like that's sales one-on-one do Wilburn's a master at it. And that's fine. Good for him. I say, uh, you know, good for him. Um, I just don't know where he sheds his skin. I've never seen it laying around like a red crest or whatever, but he's slithering around. Ain't no doubt. Um, but again, Boyd's hands weren't in any of that, but Boyd does become, the focal point for so much hate on the internet. Um, and, and, and even with me and like, I, and this is all Boyd understand that like this Watson deal is all Boyd obviously and his fragile ego. But, but I, I say all that to say dating back to 2019, like after the split, like I criticized them buying FLW, they cannot handle criticism. They cannot handle 
not controlling, you know, not controlling the narrative. And the problem with that is, um, with any business is like, people are going to criticize you. People that are paying customers, which are what the anglers are, like they're going to talk crap, dude. It happens at Bass. It happens at MLF. It happens at freaking Walmart. Okay. You can't control it. You can only try to be better each and every day that you get up to make sure that the criticisms become less. But when you roll in with this gigantic ego, right, that you know everything, that you're going to take out Bassmaster. And then what? What was that? Oh, it was Polnick and Swindle going back? Oh, it was Hackney and Jason Christie? Oh, it was Jacob Prosnick? Oh, those guys all that? Oh. Hmm. Damn. Oh, it was Randall Thornton? Oh. All those guys let, oh, oh, you let Mike McClellan get away. You let Jeff Sprague keep fishing, but you let Mike McClellan not requalify one of the industry veterans. That's one of your owners. Oh, oh, okay. Matt Becker catches the same fish twice, has admitted to it multiple times. You blame it on the tournament director. It's definitely not Matt's fault in any kind of way. Wink, wink. Ridiculous. And then he wins Angler of the Year and he's heralded. Huh. We don't, we don't do anything about that. Stories after story after story of failed polygraphs over and over and over paying fines to get out of failed polygraphs. For years, you hear this stuff. You hear it. Don't do anything about that. Don't do anything about that. Keep controlling the narrative. Keep controlling the narrative. 497 changes nobody can keep up with. Keep controlling the narrative. Keep controlling the narrative. Massacre the payouts and the BFLs. Keep controlling the narrative. Things aren't well. If you're focused on, and I actually told, I actually told uh, one of their biggest anglers this. He was he he and I got in a back and forth about something. Someone commented on my YouTube channel. I'm like, dude, why are you living in the comments? Like, life is good. You're winning a lot of money. Like, why would you dig around in the YouTube comments? Right. That's where people that don't have anything to do live, like myself. And uh, and it's one of those deals where. Like if you're focused on things like this podcast and or or fake like the Jim Jones bass fishing page that was all like, dude, they all hired a damn a, like it, private investigator to try to figure out who was doing that. And you had MLF wives in there and anglers and we know who it is. It's it's clearly Trait Zeldine. It's this and it's that. And it was just bananas. It's Luke Duncan's like, no, it ain't. Luke says what he says to a microphone and to a camera. He's never had a fake page in his life. Now, I do run two social media accounts now. Southern Boating Supply is one of them. You can follow along at Southern Boating Supply. But uh, it's, the only, it's the only multiple accounts I have. Um, but like these, these, like you're trying to run a business and you're worried about all those things. Like tell me your business, you're not worried about the business without telling me you're not worried about the business. Like you worry about these petty little things. What's the, uh, what's the saying? Like lines don't, you know, worry about sheep or whatever the saying is. Can't remember it right now. I'm all juiced up on Celsius this morning. Um, but there, there's a, I heard our, uh, the great rapper T.I. say, there's a reason that the trees grow taller than the grass. I love that. I love that saying. But you worry about these things. And with the Watson thing, these guys are paying thousands of dollars. And listen, James is the only one that's really vocal about it for the most part. It's getting a little more unhinged for him with all these there. And they know that. And I think James was fined in, and, and then they let all the anglers know about the fine for the first time. They've let the anglers actually know something on purpose that he was fined 10 grand to try to quiet down what could be coming. Listen, I was at Red Crest. I talked to a lot of their veteran anglers and the, the same ones that were pissed at me, in 2019 that were like, we got Boyd and Jim's back. Definitely don't anymore. Right? Like they're not happy. Sponsors aren't happy. There are things that are happening within that organization that you should be worried about, but an FBD hack comes out <laughs> in a fishing podcast and you can't handle it. Come on, dude. Come on, dude. Um, and it's all set though. All these things are set up to indeed control the narrative but the the overwhelming theme about boyd and this has nothing to do with other people within the flw camp the old flw folks i love them all i i talked to them for a very long time at red crest hug next there are a lot of great people within that organization um but when you 
like we had just had this boat wreck and those are the boat incident on Harris Day and those are two April Fools as well. They win awards. But you don't suspend them like you don't do anything as much as you do to Watson. And uh and truly man, you just show once again that you have thin skin and you have no integrity. None. None whatsoever. Now I know he's got a podcast now. Uh, old Boyd, he's got old White Rods himself. He's got a he's got a podcast, and so I'm sure it, it'll be uh, absolutely. He'll probably lean back. He likes playing the villain man, and we all play right into it. Like he enjoys. I've, I've had multiple people, dude. What do you think he thinks about? Dude, he knows what's coming. He loves it. He gets off on it. I'm convinced. He's a. He, that's what narcissists do, right? And um, I think you know. I've talked to I've talked to a lot of their anglers that do feel like they need an overall leadership change, and they, they do. And uh, there were a lot of them that were glad that Wilburn was trying to get out of the way, and he's still slithering around all the time in the background. And uh, and a guy like Boyd, man, um, just dumb decision after dumb decision based on emotion. James Watson is a veteran. He was a drill sergeant in the Army. He's fought for this country, fought for freedoms. Y'all play the national anthem every morning. I've said this on this show multiple times, but then a guy can't speak his mind about the fact that he thinks things are not good that hands you 30 or 40 grand a year, like it's obnoxious to even think about. And I would say that if you're an angler on the Bass Pro Tour, I I don't care if you're a young guy. I don't care if you're Jacob Wheeler that wins and, and Dustin Connell that wins all the time that do benefit from it. There are about 10 guys over there that do benefit from being a part of the Bass Pro Tour, but they would benefit if they were fishing the, you know, because they're so good and they're so good at what they do from a social media perspective and all that. That it doesn't matter, dude, if they were fishing Tuesday nighters, they would be the dudes, right? Like, I understand that. Um, but if you're one of those guys, and I know Jacob's sponsored by Boyd, and I would say this to him, I, I Jacob and I have a good relationship most of the time, and I would say this to him. If you're anybody in that organization and you think this was a good idea on the James Watson thing, regardless, James poked the bear. James poked the bear. He's got hats that say FBD and Boyd's colors. I get it. I told him, I said, dude, you're, the, you're he's going to retaliate. There ain't no doubt. He can't handle it. But if you're anybody in that organization and you think this was a good idea, if you're an angler and you think, well, because I've had a couple of them say, oh, well, James was asking for it. If you think that way, just get ready to keep getting spoon-fed more bull because you ain't got no freedom over there. Not freedom of speech. I can't lose my job. Buddy, you fish eight weeks a year. You fish eight weeks a year. Figure it out. Figure it out. Start being, start being like actual men stand up for each other. Speak up. Don't quietly send me texts thanking me for what I say on this and what other people say on podcast and then cower around and act like it ain't going on. All this was to do was to let all of you know, you other 79, you better shut up and fall in line. Period. End of story. It's what the fine was about and it's what this is about. Nobody wins afraid of losing. That's a line in a Chris Stapleton song. And man, it hits me every single day when I'm working on Southern boating, when I'm working on this. Can't be scared, man. Can't be scared. But from the top anglers, Edwin Evers, Jacob Wheelers, Dustin Connell, Mark Daniels Jr., Mark Davis, Skeet Reese. And I'm not just calling those out. Every, everybody over there, you better realize, dude, this ain't good. <laughs> like, this ain't good. Like, it's not. Whether you love James, hate James, he's, he can be polarizing. James can be a lot. But buddy, the fact that none of y'all got his back on this is silly. It's silly. And, uh, and, and y'all are April fools as well if you keep thinking that this is a good idea or that things are going well. Because it's not. It's not going well. It is not going well. It is not going well. You can't walk in that Bassmaster Classic and then walk in Redcrest and think things are going well. 
you can't sit through meetings where you get finally get told, well, we're changing the format from this to 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 this and then back to this and then no interface, but then we got interface. Like, how can you wake up on a daily basis and think things are going well? It's not. It's not. Doesn't need to fail. For a lot of you anglers' sake, for the industry's sake, a lot of going on, a lot of good people. But you better wake up. You better wake up because this right here, this little press release that got sent out on Good Friday is not good. It's not good in any freaking way. If you think it is, keep on drinking that Kool-Aid. Hey, 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 get you another dose of it. Get you another dose of it. I don't know, man. I mean, I see this thing playing out that, that you know, eventually it'll just be the the Ducket Tour. Will there just be 10 guys that just all sponsored by Ducket and then it just doesn't matter? Like if it keeps going this way, what's happening, man? Look at the comments on social media. Look at the people that are just all saying FBD, fish boat docks. Fish and boat docks is illegal. Look at that. And then, and then when you lay your head down at night before your next tournament at Dale Hollow, think about the fact that James Watts, especially if you're one of those anglers, and they got many of them on the Bass Pro Tour that do things the right way. Not the Jeff Spriggs, not the Spencer Sheffields, not the – which Spencer was penalized, but not, not, the, not the, the Matt Beckers who blatantly – like they all did this stuff. On, not, not the – there are several more that I could name, but they got, they got away with uh, Stone Cold, uh, you know, they – Look up at the sky. Thank you. Thank you. As they were cheating, catching the same fish multiple times. There was a bunch of that going on. There was a bunch of them. A bunch of them that were worried about losing their careers. Man, this could be a black eye. You cheated. You cheated. So many of them. But when you lay your head down before the first day of practice at Dale Holla and you're like, man, three letters on a hat got one of the most – watched one of the biggest personalities, one of the best dudes that actually stands up for what's right, suspended, kicked out, banned, gone. And then whenever I blast off on day one, I got cheaters all around me and they're still here and they get to be here. But James is going to be sitting on the deck of his $1 million house on Table Rock smoking a cigar and he's going to be all right. (laughs) But all y'all ain't. I'm telling you, man, you better you better wake up and pay attention. Wake up and pay attention. This is absurd. And uh, and boy, I would just say, dude, just get some thicker skin. Just get some thicker skin. If you're gonna keep on making mistakes, people are gonna keep on talking about it. Uh, but I will end that April Fool award. That's the biggest April Fool right there. With uh, you know, this right here. Congratulations, Boyd and FBD, indeed. All right, some other April Fools. The clowns that had the boat wreck, what are you doing? What are you doing? I mean, uh, I've seen a little bit of clips of the video. I don't know all the details, but I know that they should have just been banned for life and um, absolutely absurd. Uh, an April Fool Award goes to Randy Blanket. Randy Blanket. Can't say his real name because if you do, it's like Beetlejuice pops up. Uh, dude, Randy has got the like subs I saw him post the other day, it pops up on my Facebook feed and I don't know why, cause I don't follow him, but he does because he gets so much traction over a hundred thousand subscribers and congrats to him, man. Listen, congrats to Randy on that. He, he found a, he found a way just like we all, all find a way in life. But the problem I have with Randy is like, this is cheating or just the nonstop. You know, I told you this would happen. The videos about live scope and stuff. Uh, and the reason I say Randy blanket is I do indeed need a blanket when I watch it. Cause I'm going to take a nap. If I see 30 seconds of his clips, I'm like, <sighs> and a lot of y'all love it, man. And shout out Randy for it. Shout out Randy for it. He he's got it. He's got it figured out on how to, uh, people love, they love that man. They love to pick sides and they love cancel culture, obviously. And so, uh, and that's another thing like the James Watson. If you support that, like, come on, man, cancel culture at its finest. Uh, but Randy Blanket, his Bassmaster Classic videos, I saw him pop up were just like, what? And now he's back on like the bedfish thing, which he's been on for 20-something years. And like, 
just regurgitates the same material over and over. But y'all keep subscribing and liking and commenting, and it keeps going up. And, dude, he's uh, I'm sure he's making a good bit of money off of you. So, uh, and listen, I don't hate the player. I hate the game. <laughs> so, congrats, Randy Blanket, on his uh, April Fool Award. And the last one, and I'm not going to spend much time on this. Uh, this dude, this dude is, uh, he doesn't deserve to even be mentioned on this platform at all. Uh, but I think his name is Steve um, Chapman. I don't know. Uh, I've met this dude several times because he co always comes up to me and tells me what a fan of Low Budget Live he is over the years. And dating back to like the first MPFL season, he's done multiple little videos. He very much tries to do a Low Budget Live. Like he had a... Uh, I've been told he had a fishing show in Florida of some kind of like a radio show that I'm sure 17 people listen to. Um, God, I'm sure it was exhilarating from the clips I've seen of the other stuff he does, but he did very much try to set up like whatever this is. Like he, he tried that. And uh, the very first one he ever did, he was dogging MPFL, which is fine. I don't care about that at all before it even started. Um, but he had some things to say about me and I called him out personally and uh and i think literally like he peed down his leg and then like the next time i saw him he wanted to shoot a video with me and where was the next time i saw him oh at an mpfl event and then i saw him right after that at icast and he did the same thing again it's back in 2021 guy's a cupcake like a total cupcake but he likes to pretend to be a tough guy on a camera it's weird man and uh and i get sent clips of him from people from time to time because somebody watches this stuff not many but some some people watch this stuff get your fish on your fish on uh but but uh i get sent clips but on this watson deal he made a video because everybody's in a in a uh, view grab you know over that i'll assure you if you listen to a dumbass like him about anything going on in pro fishing this dude is so removed from all of it he ain't involved dude that guy he ain't even behind the behind the scenes. Like, understand that. I'm grateful for all the relationships I have and to be able to talk to stuff and bring you guys. Like, but like, I'm at, like, when one of the first phone calls James Watson made on Friday after the announcement, it, it was to me, right? Like, this guy, like, he's my friend. Like, all this happened on my show. But this clown, this Steve, I think that's his name. That's what he does on his video. He goes, he used my content and Chris and Trait's content. I only could stomach 45 seconds of this, okay? But to get views. He used our podcast to get views to act like he had, he was going to break down the Watson situation. He's got the clickbait thumbnail, the whole nine. And he's very pro Boyd, of course, because he's always he always tries to take the opposite of what he thinks I would say or Chris and Trade or whoever to try to get views. And, uh, and I think he got 3,000 views. And look, dude, congrats. Uh, congrats. That was awesome. I'm sure, uh, I'm, I'm glad you did that. Um, but he does this deal where he like, he plays my content and then he says, I think the show, I think, I think it's called low budget. Live. I think, I think it's low budget live. That's what he did when he dogged me out one day. He's like, I think his name is Luke Duncan. And then this son of a comes up to me and asks for selfie videos and tells me what a fan he is. And he does not miss an episode. He's done this multiple times. Multiple times, multiple times, but now he's using my content to talk crap about my friend, James Watson, in all of this to side with the devil, to try to get views. And I've avoided talking about this clown on here multiple times because he does not deserve the attention. I'll be honest. He deserves to just keep living whatever life he lives down in Florida where nobody cares that he exists. But, but like using my content, and using people like Trey and Chris that work hard to actually lay it out there, actually tell the truth, actually tell what they actually feel about this stuff, Steve. Like, give me a break, dude. So you get to win you an April Fool Award. And look, I know you'll probably print it out and put it on your shelf behind your uh, your live bait uh, thing that you got behind you there. It's funny. I got one of those right over here, too. It's, it's weird. I used to film in front of it. That's, that's crazy, huh? bananas man uh florida man thirsty at 50 for views that's what your next clickbait should be feel free to use this clip steve you didn't ask me on the other ones i bet you didn't ask Trey and chris either now i understand that's how the internet works but don't act like you don't know who i am and don't act like you're not a fanboy and then talk crap don't do that get your fish on there you go it's the most views you'll ever get steve congratulations all right, moving on. We got a great guest today. 
great guest today. But before that, I got to thank the people because the low lifers make this show happen and the sponsors. And after the classic, if there's one thing I know, the sponsors absolutely have my back, man. So many of y'all, uh, and you know who you are, but I, I want to start by saying a huge thank you to all of them. They're at the low budget live. They handed out all kind of stuff in the express booth at the, uh, the live podcast, but it was, it was all good. And, uh, I've got a really great group of people that work with me and, and, and look, they're not technically, I don't, I'll talk about them every week, but the folks at Eagle call Trocar always got my back, man. They're sharing Southern boating stuff. They're amazing. Go check out their new drop shot hooks. Absolutely incredible. But let's jump into this. Y'all know I try to keep it tight these days on the time frame. So here we go. Fish tips, fishtips.com. You can use code LBL10 at fishtips.com to save on your first tip. But these are guides and pro anglers that are telling you where to catch fish. Maybe you want to take your boat and go fish a lake you've never fished, but you don't want to fish with a guide. Well, there are tons of tips available at fishtips.com. So you can get the juice. You can get the juice. You can find out all sorts of things. Maybe you want to find out how to set your depth finder up a little bit better from somebody like uh, a top pro. There are lots of them on there. Go check it out. Fishtips.com. Just the tip. Right there. 34 seconds. Killed it gillfishing.com get on gillfishing.com use code lbl gift when you spend a hundred dollars you're going to get a voyager day pack a little waterproof backpack right now for spending a hundred bucks and being a low lifer get you a new rain suit get you some boots get you some of them sun gloves get you get get a hey it's bucket hat season they got a sweet one on there they've got all sorts of things to get you right in all kinds of weather conditions at gillfishing.com code lbl gift Use that there. Pro Guide Batteries, ProGuideBatteries.com. Holy cow, they're new chargers. Listen, I cannot wait. I cannot wait. They got a new five bank that is absolutely insane. You can set up what type battery right on top of the charger. They look good. They work good. They got this built-in fan that keeps them, like, the fan system is incredible that they've got on these things to keep, keep them cool. Uh all different variations. Check them out, proguybatteries.com. The new chargers are where it's at to go with their lithium batteries, man. Like they, uh, such a great company. I say it all the time. They're not a fly by night. They've been around for 40 years. Support the people that support the industry. They support a lot of great anglers. Proguybatteries.com, LBL10 saves you money there. Bait works.com, bait works.com. That's where you can find the LOB jig. And so many of y'all came to the Bait Works booth at the Classic to get Rooster, and Rooster is a fish catcher. Holy crap. <clears throat> I got to spend some time with the rooster this week and uh, them old bigs like it. I'm getting tagged in social media stuff. We we sold a ton of them there. That new uh, rooster color. You can use code, use code Duncan-10 at bait-wrx to get you some for yourself. Or maybe it's mag draft season. Maybe coal shad. Maybe, maybe, maybe get on there and get you all kind of stuff. Baitworks has got it in stock. Bait-works.com. And last but not least, hang the freaking banner. Express Boats, Hot Springs, Arkansas, the manufacturers of that beautiful X21 Pro LE that I'm running right now with the 250 Yamaha Show, Sea Deck Bow to Stern. More storage than you can shake a stick at, fastest whole shot in the game. But they just released the new H20, rated for a 175, the H20, the Hyperlift series. They've had other sizes in that, but they just released the H20. Go check it out online. Go check it out at a dealer soon. They'll be available. The first one was at the Classic, so uh, they'll be out there. I promise you, if you're if you're looking for a bigger boat, <clears throat> excuse me, than the X19, this 20 obviously falls right in line between the 19 and the 21 in the H series. So won't hurt the bank account at all. Times are times are tough. Maybe you're looking for a new boat, a little bit bigger boat, ready for a 175. It's going to run in the low 60s, but the H20. Go check it out, expressboats.com. Express Boats, building excitement since 1966. And on that note, before I leave Express, uh, the Express read, Clay Connor, uh, their vice president of marketing, has retired. We threw him a party there on on Low Budget Live. We tried to get a lot of folks up to to, uh, talk about Clay, but I I just want to say congratulations to Clay and thank you to Clay. He is uh, a dear friend of mine. 
And uh, he's always one of those people in life that likes to check me up and keep me in line. So I, I'm grateful for that. Clay Connor, the great CC, heading into retirement, going to run that RV all over the country. All right, our guest today is a uh, is a fantastic uh, individual. He's a wild man. He's a wild card. And I had him booked before all this craziness happened. And he and I have texted back and forth about it a lot. He's He's got some opinions on it as, as well. Just qualified for the Elite Series. He top 20, I believe, to lead a bend right there, 20th or 21st. Then he top 10's Lake Fork. Then he goes on to top 10 the Classic, seventh place in the Classic, Bassmaster Classic, man. His first ever Classic. Unbelievable. Uh, he has one of the funniest social medias. Like, the dude puts in work. He's been on my radar for a while now. I uh, got to know him through Gerald Swindle a couple years back. But uh, ladies and gentlemen, Give it up for KGP Fishing himself, Kyle Patrick. All right, as promised, here he is, Elite Series rookie. And I'm going to say on the verge of being one of the next bass fishing superstars as social media is killer. He has uh, got a personality for days, and we're glad to have him. Kyle Patrick, welcome to Low Budget Live. Oh, great to be here. I've watched this show for a long time, man. Um, well, as long as it's been around. And... Uh, yeah, it's cool, and I appreciate the kind words. I don't know. I'm. I feel like I'm not gonna be the next. Well, I mean, dude, but but think about this. So you got to remember though, before you say something, like this is so new to me, and like it feel like when I when I'm in the weigh-in line, it's not like I'm like, oh, I'm just gonna beat these guys. Like, no, yeah, like I'm like, holy smokes, like you know, that's Brandon Polinick. Holy smokes, that's Gerald Swindle. Like, it's still like that for me. You know what I mean? Uh, I, I get it. And and you're not, I know you're not, you're not a cocky dude. You're a humble dude. And I know you understand the position you're in. You're the new guy. You're, you're a part of this amazing rookie class we're seeing this year and you worked your butt off to get here. But I think when I, when I say superstar, that means a lot of things. Are you going to be the next Kevin Van Dam? We don't know that yet. You're too early in your career to even throw that kind of stuff out there. But I think you are though, the total package. And what I mean by that, dude, your social media, and social media is king. I don't care what anybody says. Uh, that and forward facing sonar. Wink, wink. Let the comments <laughs> know. Um, but man, like you, you went out like when you're in the opens. These these videos that you start putting up that just blow up. They're always in that like the discover feed. That's when you know somebody's doing things the right way. Well, I've been at this for a very long time since like 2014, 15, hanging around fishing social media. So almost 10 years. And dude, you start seeing that it's it, it's. I see people using your audio that you created for so many videos. And I'm like, that's how, you know, but that's what I mean, man. Like you, you are on this rise and I see interviews from the classic and I see your sponsors. So proud to be working with you, man, whether it's Yamaha or missile, uh, so many different ones. And, and so that's what I mean by that is time will tell dude, if you're going to win 37 angler of the years and all the, <laughs> yeah, like, right. But like right now, man, the Kyle Patrick star is bright. I appreciate that. Yeah. I think that, you know, I focus a lot on fishing, but I, I feel like I focus m just as much on like, you know, the, like you said, the full package, like making my sponsors happy, doing as much as I can on the media side, because that matters a lot too. And I think a lot of people, I'm going to say people I'm gonna keep it broad. A lot of people forget that, that that's what you need to do. Cause it's easy to focus on fishing when you're, you know, winning tournaments or top 10 in every event. But when you have a slump for a year or two and you're not dialed on the other stuff, it's easy for you to kind of fly under the radar and not, you know, progress. Right. Like, you know, you got to have something to fall back on um, when times get tough tournament fishing wise. Right. Like, yeah. And I, and I think a lot of veteran pros, uh, they hate that about where the industry is at now. And look, man, I don't necessarily disagree with it, but they're the, the days of, well, I got in a magazine article or I said this on a weigh-in stage with a patch on my shirt and all that. Those days are over. Like they just are. It's we live in a, it, it is. And 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 even fishing social media is oversaturated. You've got to find a way to stand out, which you've done very well. Um, and and I feel like I've always tried to do different things because we just talked about like shout out Justin Hamner for winning the classic, but he's done 37 interviews. And I would rather talk to Kyle Patrick, seven, like give you some, you know, like top 10 it, man. I'd rather, I'd rather uh get the deets on what it's like to be the dude in the top 10 in your first classic. And, uh, and, and Justin's going to tell everybody 
exactly how he caught them, and he loves that Milo's tea and all that. But uh, but this is kind of what I've done on LBL, just just a little bit, you know, a little bit outside the box. And I, I think that's it, it's so important though for young anglers. I know you got a lot of fans, a lot of young fans to understand that. And I say this on the show all the time. The fishing business is changing. It's changing rapidly. The tournament world is changing rapidly, but you have to, it, it can be exhausting. It can be a daunting task, but you have to be good at all of it. If you're not, you will not survive. And that goes for the Jacob, like look at Jacob Wheeler and like Dustin Connell. I'll use them for a perfect example. They're winning everything. You don't ever see the social stuff slow down, whether it's YouTube, you know what I mean? Like they put in time on the water and off the water and like all that really freaking matters man it does and I, gerald is one of the guys i use in his example when uh jacob fouts like the the stuff came up he's like well i don't want to do social i want to fish for a living i should make money because i'm on the elite series that whole deal i'm like look at gerald swindle yeah he ain't got to trust me and he yes. does, it. He does <laughs> it. yeah he's been very successful so, so kudos to you for doing that man uh for the low lifers out there you're i mean northeast like i'm a bubble bass fisherman down here like guys from the northeast like it's not easy to compete and you roll to texas and then oklahoma and just boom 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 yeah i'm yeah. Kyle Patrick, man how'd you get into this yeah so i i've said this before on other on other podcasts and stuff but so i got i first met you right and and you reminded me of this backstage with gerald i was staying at gerald's place through a connection the guy's name is paul pagnato he's you know a, a businessman like shout know, out paul shout out paul he is dialed in on the the business side of stuff to say the least we'll just put it like that okay um you know he sold multiple companies for ungodly amounts of money anyway the guy's successful and he also like loves the fishing industry loves bassmaster you know, want, still wants to help on that side of things, by the way. Um, and he connected me with Gerald because he was like, Kyle, I'm going to pay for all your entry fees to fish as a co. And this is 2021. He's like, you can fish all of them as a co or six of them as a co. And then I'll pay for you to fish three of them as a, as a boater. Uh, so I was like, okay, yeah, <laughs> like, I quit my job. 21. This is 20 21. 21. Okay. So I quit my job. I was, uh, working at Douglas, uh, Douglas Outdoors, selling rods, like driving across the country, selling rods. Um, and I was like, I had this opportunity. The owner was like, dude, go ahead. That's, that's awesome. You know, I still did some stuff for them, but, and then, you know, I went and, uh, fished the centrals and finished 180, 160, and then 60. <laughs> um, and you know, just learning. Cause that was a tough, uh, you know, division, but long story short, he introduced me. The key stuff is he introduced me to Gerald and John Cruz and Chad Morgan Taylor and all these guys. And I, Oh, he also paid for me to marshal all the elites. <laughs> this dude was just like, here you go, man. <laughs> like, <laughs> hey, do you, hang on a second. When this is over, can you give me Paul's number? I'm going to have a business opportunity. Right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's exactly. awesome. Shout yeah, out. Dude, it, it was just fortunate. I've met, right? I've met Paul in the past. Like, Gerald speaks very highly of my friend, Darian. We talked about that before we started the show, but yep. great, great human being. Yep. I just got lucky and met him and like showed my passion to fishing. And he was like, yeah, man, like he, he's just a, a super good guy, like good people anyway. Um, and so, you know, I was staying at G's house. Um, I forget why. I think before that, that Lewis Smith opened when I was fishing as a boat. Yeah. And, yeah. Yep. I met you and I think I finished 150 whatever it was something terrible that late Not right by me <laughs> yeah <laughs> and uh yeah yeah man it was just that that was the start of it right like everyone needs in this industry especially to be a professional angler everyone needs a little unless you've got it right unless you've got like the financial backing already everyone needs a little bit of a like a boost because it is so tough man like yeah. you know what i mean like that was my like jump right into where I could be like, okay, we're going to make, we're going to run at this. We're going to, we're going to try to do it because I knew that I only had two to four years after at that point to make my, you know, to, to grow my brand, build my, you know, fishing skills and like, you know, try to make it to the elite series. Cause you can only do it for so long, man. Like it's so expensive and the opens is so bad. Like the payouts are so bad. Yeah. 
and the grind of it all too, right? Like mentally, yeah. physically, like it's not, you know, it's a lot easier. And I say this on the show a lot. It's a lot easier just to go get a job. Like if you want to make a living and go fishing because you love fishing on the weekends and whatever, yeah. it's a lot easier just to go do whatever you want to do. To be a professional angler is not a walk in the park. It's just Dude, not. I had a great job. I literally was working in the fishing industry. I love the fishing industry, everything about it. I love all the anglers. I have no hate for anybody because I love just the, our fishing industry. Well, you know not, I, mean? Like, I mean, like FBD, come on. Continue. Well, <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Like, that's like a very, that is a special <laughs> situation. <laughs> I love fishing boat docks and I will forever love them. And I'm pissed that it, it's illegal, okay? But. <laughs> Sorry, I can't help it. I got to get it in there so many times, like a drinking game. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like I just, I enjoyed it and you know, I took a stab at it. That was basically it with the help of it, man. There's no doubt that I had help. Right. Well, I, but, but dude, I think that the narrative that gets thrown out there, this, this viewpoint that you see from people that get heavy on the keyboards of well, these young guys, they got rich parents or they got this or they got that dude having helps not bad. Not everybody's got it. And that's fine. Right. Like, so there are, but I, I still think that what gets lost in those in those stories that people invent in their mind, they're like, "Well, the old school guys didn't have any help." Yeah, they did. At yeah, what are you point, talking about? They were at I, some point to do this. Even in 1991, somebody came along to make sure that angler A that you love so much was able to keep doing it. Because all of them have a story about well. I was done if I didn't catch him at the Potomac because I didn't have gas to go. And then I won right. or I met this yeah. dude in the parking lot and he handed me 10 grand. There are so many of those stories out there. I mean, there. look at Bill Lowen's story about the, yeah. his family. Yeah. That, I mean, that's a sad story, right. but it's also but, an inspiring right. one. Yes. Yes. Right? It's incredible. Like, that's the incredible. Same I mean, it's not the same thing. I don't want to put that. Up no, but, that, but, it, but it is that, that, you know, luck is, you know, preparation, meeting opportunity. You're doing right. what you need to do. And, and, and the universe you collide with, and listen, you're looking right at living proof of that many times over in yeah. my life. I'm a dumb redneck from, from Southern middle Tennessee that runs my mouth, dude, that just loves fishing and I love music. And like, that's just kind of been my life since yeah. I was like 12 years old. And look, so easy a caveman can do it. I'm an overnight sensation after 20 years. I joke about it all the time. Like, but but I've had those moments in life where you go, okay. Like later, you look back and you go, yeah, well, that was one where this dude opened this door yeah. and that happened, but I was standing at the door. Right. That's important for everybody to understand about a Kyle Patrick, a Trey McKinney, whoever. You're standing at the door when the door opens. If you're sitting on your couch complaining that the door's never open for you. Yeah. Well, there's a lot uh, of that going on. I there's a lot of that, man. And and I'll, I'll say this before we move on. This is one of my favorite jokes of all time, but there's a guy every night. He was, he was known as a cheapskate, right? And every night he'd pray every single night. God, if you would just let me win the lottery, my entire life would change. God, just please let me win the lottery and did, night after night after night. And finally the Lord spoke to him and the Lord said, Jerry, I will let you win the lottery, but first you got to buy a dadgum ticket. <laughs> exactly. And, it, and, and that's it, right? That that's, is exactly that's it. it. That's, it. <laughs> that's good. That no, good. It. it's it, man. It's like, well, I could be pro if, or I could do this if I had that forward face of sonar, or if I could do this if I knew the right people. Well, dude, if you ain't ever in the right spot, or you're not ever standing at the door knocking on it, trying to get in, it doesn't matter. So that's what I would like to say. If you got a dream, you can't be afraid to chase it. And and these guys are not afraid to chase their dreams. It starts small too. That's what that's it talks about. Like, yeah, it starts, it starts with little things, right? Like, okay, I'm gonna take a chance. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna ask Douglas if I can be an on-the-road sales rep, drive around the country. Because hey, if I just stay in my state, my small club, which I have more respect for my club than anything, right? But if I stayed there and like tried to just fish my way to the top, like that's a, a lot harder than meeting the right people across the country yeah. because it's not just New York that bass fishes or just Alabama or just, you know, Kentucky or just wherever, Oklahoma. You got to get out there, meet people because that's that was step one for me was I was like, I need to meet as many people as I can, right? So I met you, 
I met Gerald, I met John Cruz, like all these connections down the line. I thought, you know, it might help me better. And it did. Well, I'll never forget. And Trey and I, <laughs> we, laugh, we laugh about this. So we remember we were staying in that really terrible house trailer. It was, yeah, basically, I remember that. it was great. I liked it. Yeah. Well, it was, it was, it was, I don't know if great, if great's the word for it, Trey's ex-girlfriend and she actually broke up with him over this. She actually booked it for us. And we talked about it on the podcast and she broke up with him the next week. So one of my favorite things that ever happened, uh, other than Watson getting suspended and fine because of the podcast, that's my other like claim to fame, right. Is getting Trey out of a bad relationship. So we met Kyle Pat and Kyle comes in, dude, and you are larger than life. I mean that. Like, and you're with G, and and when somebody kind of outshadows G, because when he gets on one, you know, G gets on one, oh, on yeah. court, right? And you were just like, I'm like, dude, this guy is eight up with this stuff. Like you were, but I'll never forget. This is what you said to me. My eyes are probably like this. You, too, dude, you were you were dialed, like you were ready to go. And this was like the night before the tournament. We're out there. Everybody's talking crap about how they're gonna catch them the next day, and you're staying with G, and you said. Man, I figured this deal out. And me and Trey, I, for, we your name never comes up. Not, we're like, you remember that time Kyle was so dialed? You said, man, I figured it out. Because it was very stingy at Smith. You're like, I'm flipping wood. And you're like, I'll flip in there the first time, and I'll catch a short. I'll flip in there the second time, I'll catch another short. And on the third time, I'll catch an over. <laughs> I'll catch a and you told us that. I was like, that boy. I was like, buddy, I ain't been flipping my jig enough times. Right. When you left, I was like, listen, man, I don't even think about fishing like this dude thinks about fishing. I was like, when he gets on a roll, it's gonna be trouble. Like, yeah. And it has been, bro. Like, here you are. But that was my first Kyle Patrick experience. You're like, you're probably let, let's be honest, you were probably like, this guy is out of his mind. A little bit. But so am I. So real respect's real. Right. <laughs> like he's completely a psychopath, but I like it. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious, dude. But that was my first Kyle Patrick experience in this terrible. We're all crammed in this house trailer, standing around telling fish stories, and you're like, "I figured it out. Yeah. This is the deal." And I was like, "Dude, he's either going to win or not." <laughs> not. <laughs> And I and none of us won that week. Yeah, yeah, that was <laughs> yeah. But man, you yeah, you were staying with uh, staying with G there, man. And then I'll never forget though, Trey. Like you and Trey got to got to talk and and stay with each other and stuff. And and Trey would be like, he's like his obsession with getting to the elites. Like, dude, he won't be stopped. He's like, I promise you, Kyle. He told me. I guess it was in it was the year he got DQ'd up there at Chesapeake, which would have been I guess the next year, twenty two. And you and you finished what top ten that year or fifteen? Yeah, yeah, I finished ninth yeah. because of Trey. I would have bombed <laughs> yeah. if I didn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but you were right. You were right there. And then and he's like, dude, Patrick is like, Kyle make it. Like he'll be in. And then fast forward to twenty three, dude, and it was all gas, no brakes. And that that click, that group of you guys that have now taken it to the elite series, you're trouble. <laughs> you boys yeah. are you boys are trouble. Yeah. Um, how glad are you? And I feel like this is this will be the easiest I question. Know what you're say, I, how glad are you to just have that over with, though, oh, and be at the elites? Dude, it couldn't. So, again, very fortunate because you can be – there are, like Trey, right? There are 50 guys in the Opens right now, in the EQs, that could have been on the elites and, and done very well. million percent. Fact. That's a fact. And anyone that says otherwise, they don't know. They've never fished an open, right? Right. Um, and so, you know, I feel fortunate and, and very, you know, blessed that I was able to do it then, especially with the MLF changes that are happening. And, you know, dude, it's not getting any easier. I promise you that. Like, you know. Um, You're going to get suspended just for saying yeah, that. Right, right. But, uh <laughs> Yeah, no, it was, you know, and, and people are always like, oh, they just jumped in, they looked at live scope and they qualified. It's like, dude, look, that easy, man. It's that easy. Right. Like, man, I, I fished all of, I mean, I didn't, I wouldn't say I was close, close in 2022, but I was right there. I think I finished like fourth out or something. Um, and I fished the bank in like seven of the nine, right? Like it, a lot of what, live scope it, the reason live scopes are prevalent is because the schedules aren't the yeah. schedules are lining up to fish with live scope if they're not well, up there they're not up there 
dude when people talk about like oh like you know don't get me wrong it's good but it but people don't realize like tell me it's good if i'm florida for example that's going to be an interesting one because i do not think it will play as much as people people you know think that it will but those two back-to-back events coming up yeah i mean people may run to rodman and catch him on live scope yeah sure but dude it's brutal it's gonna take nine pounds a day to get it to get a check listen the harris chain weights from the toyota series were just grotesque yeah it's pitiful and that's one of my favorite places i've ever been in the state of florida like it used to just be fantastic man it makes me sad to see what's going on down there well, like, i think they had a 35 percent fish kill didn't yeah they? I, yeah something, something like, like that. that's prepared yeah with all the like they poison the grass like it's non-stop man it's pitiful yeah, it is but no i mean it's not many videos yeah. about that though kyle patrick we What'd talked about not many videos about that though. We'll talk about uh we'll talk about Ford facing to death, <laughs> but we won't yeah. say anything about that. Yeah. But no, so but to to you know what I like about the nine, right? Everyone has their own style. Everyone's do you know, everyone's good at live scope, yes, that's true, or forward facing sonar, but everyone's kind of got their own, you know, like Tyler Williams, he throws a jig offshore. That's what Where? he does. It doesn't matter if we're in Florida. It doesn't matter if we're in New York. He is throwing the jig offshore, period. That's Dude, what he does. Right? I'm a fan, too, by the way. Like, Dude. I kind of fanboy out over Tyler a little bit. I didn't know him. I, I didn't, like, I didn't have the pleasure. Like, I met you years ago, got got to know you a little bit over the years. But, like, I didn't know Tyler till the elites and, and seeing him through the opens a little bit. But, dude, he's, he's another one of those stars on the rise, dude. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know it's it's just a unique group and yeah it, i'm the second or third oldest which is just weird for me <laughs> now you say group so do you guys i know you room with you room Wesley. with uh yeah with, with wes uh you but do you guys all uh, collectively is there a bunch of you that share information do you kind of break it down or do you have just just you and wesley gore wesley that? gore and i he it's funny this is a funny story i called up wesley because I think like Tyler and JT, like, I don't know how everyone's separated over the, the rest of the, the rookies, but I called up Wesley. I'm like, dude, this is not a whim. Like I knew him, but I didn't like, you know, like I didn't know him, but I was like, you know what? I'm going to go for this. I think Wesley's a good dude. Yes, I was, he is. Like, I was like, dude, I called him up literally out of the blue. I'm like, you want a room together and share info next year on the elite? He was like, yep. I was like, okay. And dude, it has been awesome awesome like me and him we have our locations we got everything shared everything oh man everything and i trust that guy more than i've trusted anyone in fishing in my life like that's awesome. there, and that's a hard thing you know you know how hard that is like to have someone that you could be like dude like when i went to fork and i found that shallow area i literally called him up i'm like dude come here i'm like come here he came he was like I was like, yeah, dude. And then on Toledo, he was like, dude, you got to be out. You got to get out. You know what I mean? Like we, we are work really well together and it's obviously showed he's, he's beaten me. He, he finished 11th and then like six in his first event. It's like, dude and, knows how to catch him and he's a good dude. Well, I've been around him with the Alabama Bass Trail and seen his name in the standings, competed against him, all that for years. And like, none of this is a surprise. Right. <laughs> and and yeah. here's, here's what like, knowing guys like yourself and guys like Wesley for, for many years and knowing your fishing styles, when it comes down to the question, well, these guys can't catch them without live scope. Let me assure you of something with Wesley Gore in particular. <laughs> you better hope it don't go to the bank. <laughs> <laughs> no, a hundred percent. That dude can catch them. <laughs> on a swim jig too. It, it, his swim jigging. Uh, buddy. Dude, buddy. He, dude, 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 he, I, I'm fishing in the mouth of it. Like, in the back of this creek, I'm forking the mouth and I'm throwing at the timber, you know, and I just see Wesley, dude, his trolling motor is on 100 and he is like mm, going down the bank. He's like, oh, two, five pounder. I'm like, Jesus, this dude is he's trouble, dude. dude. He's trouble on the bank. He's trouble. And like, that's what people don't realize is, is, is everybody has a, a broad skill set anymore. I think like the versatility that, that you have to have to compete, take forward facing out of it. I think about a guy like Patrick Walters, he got his teeth kicked in in smallmouth events the first couple of years he fished. And he's like, I'm just going to spend all summer up there and get better at it. 
to become more versatile. So he can drop shot, but he can also punch mats in Florida if it comes down to it. Now he's added the live scope thing, obviously, to his game. He's fantastic with it, is as 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 is as dialed as anyone. But I think versatility, it's I think it's funny to think about all the magazine articles I read where it's like, well, if you're going to be a pro, you better be versatile. And now everybody's pissed that everybody's versatile. <laughs> you know, what's funny too, is like I was saying to you prior, like, dude, I'm not, I'm not that good at live skill. And I, I mean that, like, I'll tell you when I'm good at something, I'm not that good at live skill. There are, I, I'm willing to bet that eight, like I'm the worst out of the group. that made the, league. <laughs> the rookies. I'm dead serious. I truly believe that. Dude, I use people don't realize the first time I ever caught him on a minnow, like truly on a minnow, was Toledo Men. That was the first time I sat Ooh. out. I'm dead serious, dude. I use live scope for structure and to make a more accurate cast with a jig, a drop shot, a Sanko, whatever it is, right? Like I just use it to like, and I can see the fish, and I can I'm good at seeing fish that are like glued to the bottom like next to a stump or something. Right. But I'm not like these guys, I'm not as good as these guys. I'm getting better every day. Don't, don't get me wrong. But like I use live scope for structure, grass edges. Like I don't use it in your typical, Oh, he, he go like Milliken. Milliken's really good at it. Like going out there and deciphering, okay, that's a bass. You know, those are, you know, whatever alewives or whatever they are, you know, shad, I'm not as good at that because, dude, I, I fish in the north. I grew up fishing in New York. We don't have all that that the South has. We don't have the, you know, crazy, like you know, shad spawns. We don't have any of that. Yeah, you know what I mean. So I've always and Tyler's, Tyler's really good with live scope. But I mean, he came from the same area. Like we're structure fishermen. That's what we've done our whole lives. I fished docks till I was. Till 2021, I basically only fished docks, grass, <laughs> and, you know. You know what I mean? Like, dude, yeah. I'm in New York, and, and yeah, I, 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 I'm not good at smallmouth. I only fished largemouth in New York. Cayuga, Oneida, I was on the bank. I, that's all I did in New York. And then Ronnie Moore had me in 20 – last year, right before the St. Lawrence, I was doing well in the points. He was like, let's talk about the St. Lawrence. We're we'll bringing you on the podcast. I'm like, dude, I've been to the St. Lawrence one time. <laughs> And then I finished 110th. The worst finish of the year. So you do not like smallmouth fish. Like that's that would be the most stereotypical thing to throw your way. Oh, New no. York, dude, this guy on the New York on the, the smallmouth swing, he's gonna, he's gonna raise cane up there. You don't like it. I don't like smallmouth fish. I did not know that about you. Dude, oh Nida in the open in 2022, two years ago, I caught two smallmouth to finish 21st. The rest were largemouth. Um, like I don't like smallmouth bother me. Like, like, same. I love them, but they bother. I love them. I love them, but I'd way rather fish for largemouth. That's why Brock Mosley was my hero when he went to the St. Lawrence. Yeah, State. yeah, it was such a cool, cool event for him. Dude, I love that more than anything because I was like, I wonder if I can fish for largemouth when I go to the St. Lawrence. And then I got pressured into like. The small amount still, and it is, you can't really compete anymore. With live scope, yeah. You know what I mean? But no, I mean, people don't realize that. And I told Ronnie, I was like, dude, I'm, I, I do not like small amount. I've been I'm in the same room twice now, twice. <laughs> so, you know, everyone always has, you know, their, you know, oh, Kyle's going to be good at small amounts from New York. Like, that's not how it works. And it's, and that's the same thing as all they can do is live scope. Like, you don't know. People don't know, and they no, just no, do no, everything. No. And they, Listen, dude, I read comments about me like for, for years, right? Just because obviously when you're this outspoken, people are going to love it, hate it, whatever. And I'm very fortunate. There are a lot of low lifers that do enjoy it, obviously. But I'll see people that will be like, yeah, like this was back with my former employer. They'd be like, yeah, you had to get a job because he couldn't catch him on the FLW tour. I was like, hey, homeboy, I started working there in 2005 at 22 years old, and they allowed me to fish the FLW tour. <laughs> like, what are you talking about? Like, I had a job while I was fishing, stupid. Like, you don't know anything about me. Sit down. Yeah. Up. Listen, homeboy. Yeah. Listen, like my good, like are you kidding me right now? Like, well, you know, he couldn't his disastrous music career. Like, also, also, I was playing bars and writing songs while I 
drum roll, had a job. Stupid. <laughs> like, I saw one the other day that said, uh, and they just make me laugh, honestly. I saw one the other day that said, yeah, he had to start YouTube because he couldn't catch fish and he can't sing. <laughs> Listen, homeboy. Buddy, my mortgage does not get paid with any of this shit. <laughs> like, understand? Oh God, dude. <laughs> you know what's funny is I like truly this. I've had to, like I said, like I'm a lover. I, I, I'm not a hater. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just telling you, you, you ladies like, out there. Come. Like I'm not a hater. I really am not. And and when I when I am, I, I I'm like, damn, like that was. I get like, it, dude. You know what I mean? I'm like, I, I shouldn't be a hater, right? I, I have to check myself once in a while. But, I, like, I try to be open-minded to everything in the fishing industry because, look, we all just want to catch bass. That's where it all I mean, starts, right? Dude, <laughs> it's like, just, everyone, like, well, I don't care can. if you came from 80 gajillion dollars. If you made it to the Elite Series, you are a hammer mm -hmm. and – you just like catching bass because you can't not like catching bass if you're on the elite series or in the opens or and doing any of this. Right. And, you know, I've had to, and on the flip side, I get upset when I get hate because I'm like, and, and I know I, I'm going to learn how not to, but like, I'm like, damn, what did I, what did I ever do to this guy? Did I piss him off? Did I like, I, cause then I go to me, I'm like, why, why is he so, mad at me what did i ever do to deserve that hate yeah and you know what i mean and i i kind of get in my head about it like i was sitting i was sitting there and i you know was thinking about like dude there, i got some haters in new york right i'm thinking i'm like what did i ever do to piss them off you were and then you were successful. That's that's what uh that's what happens man i, I actually I, before i had you on i was talking about another show show i use the term loosely but that was just the guy has bashed me a good bit over time and i've never really publicly addressed it but i did this week because it was just absurd and uh people do those kind of things man because they are it, it's a it's a jealousy thing for sure and they and look I, I have faced that much as you said like you respected your bass club but you decided to you could not make it work by doing that i've done that a couple times in my life whether it was like i was 16 or 17 like i begged my dad i'm like hey can we fish tournaments away from where we live? Because right. if I want to do this, like I want to meet more people, I want to see different lakes. And for me as a kid, like I loved that world of wonder, right? Like of rolling up to a Lake Martin that was three and a half hours from my house. I've never seen anything like that or Smith Lake or the Coosa River, you know, all these different lakes, Seminole, like all these different places when I was like, I got a crazy education when I was in high school, but I left. But then you would start to hear the whispers this is pre-social media, but like the guys that to your face were always like, oh man, Luke, we want you to do good. But then when you don't do good, you hear the whispers, well, oh, yeah, I could be a pro, but he ain't. He's, right. he's this or he's this, you know, and all these things, man. And it does happen and it is jealousy. And I think what you'll find though, Kyle, is you do have a lot more fans than you do haters and you, and you, and you will, you will realize that over time and where I got with all of it. And I talk about comments and, and every now and then there'll be a zinger where I'm like, really? Uh, and it'll yeah, kind, of, that, that kind of hurt. <laughs> you're like, Oh, every now and then, uh, for me, it was like people come at your family or personal stuff. Like that's too far. Like that's ridiculous. Yeah. I've had that happen multiple times. And that's kind of crazy, but where you'll get with it, man is, is, and I say this all the time is spend your energy. This would be my old man suggestion to Kyle Patrick. And I know, you know, this, in fact, Cat Newton taught me this, and I've said this on the show for all the low-lifers going, gosh, we get it. We've heard this before, Luke, uh, is spend more time on the positive comments than you ever do the negative. And what I mean by that, if somebody goes, Kyle Patrick, I'm a super fan, don't just hit them back with, thanks, man, thumbs up, I appreciate it. And then some guy goes, Kyle Patrick, you're a piece of crap, and then you'll give them a paragraph. Right. right? Like, that's where you got to get with it. And for years, like I, I did, I would go, somebody be like, dude, I listen to this show every time my wife gets a chemo treatment and it gets us through the hard time in our life. And I'd be like, thank you so much. And then some guy would be like, I think you're a fat piece of shit, Luke. And I'd be like, you know what? You know, <laughs> it's just not, it's not okay. Right. Like that, like to give that negative energy more negative, right. it's just not, right. it's not okay. And I did that on this show. Like I need to heed my own. Like I did a five minute diatribe on why this fat idiot in Florida is indeed a fat idiot for, for talking about <laughs> Oh God! Pretty much Celsius, Kyle. 
Hey, um, also Celsius, get at me, man. I see y'all sponsoring some podcasts. Come on, Kyle. You know anybody at Celsius? Send them my way. I, I, look, if I did, I'd be all over that. <laughs> Same. <laughs> Same. I would have sent so many like emails like you did when you were younger and fishing, and you're like, Will you please sponsor me? <laughs> Take Dear a look Celsius. at my resume. Dear Celsius on Instagram. Dear Celsius, I, I, am love, you you I love your drinks. Will you sponsor me? <laughs> dude, you know, yeah, how many emails I, I get like so that? Many dude. Those, dude. I sent so many of those dude. I was in high school. I would write, I would type letters and print them out at school, <laughs> like taking the local business and be like, Dear Shell gas station. I am Luke Duncan. <laughs> and I've received so many of those resumes over the years at TH. When high school fishes started, it would be like, here's my resume. And on it, it'd be like, fished with Bill Dance one time. <laughs> yeah. I've filled up at your gas station every day. <laughs> your burgers make me so happy. I would love to promote them to seven people in my best club. Thank you for the consideration. <laughs> Dude, oh god. We're off the rails, Cal Patrick. So well put it back. I'll put it back on the rails. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so <laughs> I don't even know how we got there. Again, Celsius. Uh ding. Celsius. Everybody's trying to get Justin Hamner a freaking Milo's deal. Get Luke Duncan a Celsius deal, people. I, I agree. Everybody tax us and Kyle Patrick. Get Kyle and I both a Celsius deal. Dude, I that's perfect. Have you, you seen me on that would be the best advertising for them? You I'd don't be like, need it. interview me you in the morning. They're like, hey guys, like, you do not need it. <laughs> I feel like I feel like if you drink a delicious Celsius, Kyle, that uh it might counter whatever you got going on. <laughs> <laughs> like All of a sudden, I'm in the morning. They're like, "Hey, just, can you do an interview?" I'm like, "Yeah, man. Like, you know, it's been just a chill day. You got an edible? Like, yeah. what's you doing?" Oh god! This trick is this. This is. Uh, I don't know if this is going good, but I'm enjoying it. I am too. It's amazing. This is why I wanted Kyle Patrick on here. All right, let's let's get, let's get it back on the rails. Uh, we're talking about haters and that kind of thing, man. You guys this year, and I say you guys, the rookie class, I feel like this rookie class has a bullseye between his shoulder blades more than ever. And there's always kind of a boys club mentality in, in all things, whether it's a new job, whether it's the fishing industry, whether that's sports, right? Like a locker room mentality where the freshmen come in, you're like, and the seniors are like, hey, man, this is our time to shine. Sit down, shut up. And in fishing, like, there's a little bit of that that goes on when you qualify, there's a little bit of we've been here, you're here now, like go over there, know your role, because the veterans forever in the sport, and I think you would agree, they had the upper hand. They yeah. did have the upper hand. But this is pre-YouTube, pre-Google Map or Google Earth, uh, all the information being out there that they put out there and and their sponsors made videos, and there's endless, 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 endless hours of content that you guys can study. And then the that meeting the tech at the same time you guys know how to practice i think you go daylight to dark harder than anybody i've ever seen that certainly happens uh but talk a little bit about because you and i've text about this and we don't have to i don't want to call out names or anything like that uh but you guys haven't been welcomed with open arms for the most part yeah for the most part there's some right. underhanded comments yeah. go on like, and things. By and it's not me that that's what I want to be clear. Like it's not. I'm looking at this from an outside perspective because, like we talked yeah, about, I I had like you know I met some legends and became friend Gerald, you know John Cruz, like all these guys. So I've sure. I have an immense amount of respect for every single guy on the Elite Series, and I won't ever like I, I I'm a fan to them. I'm a, they're my mentors. I look at them like this is this is you know who I want to be like right because they've been in it so long and they have such a big fan base they do such a good job on social you know john owns bait company right like successful yeah. one very successful yeah. one um you know and those are just two examples i'm not i just want to be clear when i come yeah, up yeah yeah for it's sure not like i'm saying that they're the negative because they're not they, they're nothing but helpful very supportive yeah yeah um but I think the rookies as a whole, especially the younger ones, especially the ones that have been having like immense success, like Trey and, you know, 
Milliken, right? Because he has a huge following, right? I think that there is some hostility because um, it's like the new age colliding, like you said, with the with the old way that this has been going, right? Um, it's a mix between that and the success that the rookie class has been having. Um, also, live scope is not helpful to the whole equation. <laughs> like this equation, not. and then you put live scope right here, dude. It is like just like, game all of them. They've all been put. So listen, I gotta say this. And there was a guy that stood on stage. I don't even say his name. There was a guy that stood on stage. I've been tagged in this speech a hundred times, talking about how forward facing sonar is this and that and whatever. This same man won a Bassmaster Classic recently and stood on the same stage and thanked Garmin and LiveScope for helping him win not very long ago, but now it is the devil, Bobby Boucher. And like, there's so much hypocrisy at all of that, but the same dudes that have been sponsored by Garmin and trying to sell it since before anybody knew about it are now like, whoa, mule. I don't like this. And you're allowed to change your mind. I do it on a minute by minute basis. God knows. Um, th there's no problem with that, but I'm just saying like the fact that it is, has become an excuse and dude, the fact that it is just, it's visceral. And I do think Kyle Patrick, I'll say this to you. Something's coming. Something's going to change. I guarantee it. Something's coming. And this is, and, and the reason I say that is, I, you know, I work, I work with a tournament organization or two, uh, but at the classic, there were rumblings that there are conversations and I don't know. And I don't know to the exact detail of what the conversations are, but something is definitely going to change. Now, is that limiting it? Is They're it, limited. 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 it? You, you think that's where it's headed? Look, look, the word look, look. If they were, if they were, look, I don't care. If they if they were to ban, if you're gonna ban live, you better ban 360. You better I, ban. You better ban. I, you know what? I'll take it a step further. You better ban side imaging. I, I want to have two two units. If you're gonna ban live scope, there's two units on the boat: a map right. and a map and a and flash. Now so I want to there go back to where you know when side imaging came out and a couple guys dominated on side imaging and they were okay. said a word and they were okay with that. They were okay they, with, cool with that. Yeah. So if we're going to do that, I want to go back. If we're going to go back one step, I want to go back all the way. In fact, might as well not even put a graph on the front of the boat. Hey, I'm here for it. I'm John, just saying, John and, it. and that may be extreme, but what I'm no, saying no, it's, is. It's, it, sorry to cut you off, but I think it's important to say this, and I've said it multiple times. It is not extreme because when you start banning things, in the outdoor space, it's like the gun argument and all this, right? Like if you start banning one specific thing and you give something an, something an inch, then they're going to take a mile. And so you can't with a straight face say, and live scope's got to go, but then we can keep 360, which is an amazing tool and a great amazing. product. And, oh, okay, side imaging, mapping, mapping, dude. Dude, not give me a freaking break. If you don't think it's an advantage to be able to drive around and know where the hell you are without a yep. map blowing around in your face, yeah. and yeah. up when you're running into standing timber. Oh, and I can also adjust this for the water level that we're at right now. And I can know exactly how everything, like get out of here. If you don't think that makes people more dangerous as pros, when they attack your Dude, local the body, I made the elite series, literally hummingbird mapping. Okay, Lake Master. It's the only okay. reason I, I can contribute my Elite Series birth to Lake Master. And that's not because, like, I'm being completely honest. Like, that is, dude, I can go into Google Earth. I can draw down the water to a year that it was low. For I did this in Oklahoma. I finished 11th in the open there. And I, leaned, I stayed off my fish like an idiot on the final day, which I'll never do again. But that's another story. I drew down the water. I found every foundation, every stump, every rock pile. I marked it on Google Earth. I put a little pin on Google Earth, and it has the coordinates. I transferred all of that data right onto my hummingbird. So when I rolled up, day one of the freaking open, I had every single thing already marked on my graphs. And I pulled up. Oh, there's a four-pounder. I don't need live scope for that, dude. I'm sitting on top of a foundation. It's got like 10 bass on it and I'm dragging my biffle head. Like, 
<laughs> it, it, yeah. There's technology out there that is way better than LiveScope. Oh, yeah. Well, and, like, you know, talking to people like Garmin, uh, who I've known for very many years, and, and a lot of great people from engineers to sales folks there, um, what they think the next, like the scariest tech that they have sitting in their hands is mapping. Yeah. legitimately like yeah. what they think the future is is mapping like if you ask them dead on what they think is the next groundbreaking thing that's what they think it is oh i, I guarantee yeah. it can you imagine knowing like we get to a lake we have really good mapping but can you imagine knowing every tiny detail of that's, the water? that scares me more than anything that scares me more than anything yeah secret rock pile that secret ditch that secret dude it's all gone yeah. with a one update Yep. To your unit, gone. That's, Everyone in their brother crazy. knows it. You could buy a thousand dollar unit, put it on your boat, connect it to batteries, and you're gone. Yep. That scares me more than anything live scope. And and like we've said, look, man, if they took it away tomorrow, I'd go back to skipping a jig uh down the bank like I do anyways, right? Like I, I love it. I mess with it, but I'm not fishing at that competitive like where you're at. Like I would only do it most likely if I was uh, you know, if I'd have been at Toledo Bend, that's probably what I would have gone to do. I would have just said, all right, this is where it's going to, going to go down. I better get my butt out here. Um, but there's a difference in saying that too. And I've said this multiple times and committing to it, right? Like there are a lot of veteran guys, they all have it. Um, but they do get caught up in just like I do. Well, hell, I'm going to go flip that bush over there. <laughs> and the two hours you went to do that, somebody's out there train wrecking seven pounders, that's the scary part for everybody. And, and yeah, I mean, and, and I think that, you know, you have someone that gets up on stage and says, I caught eight and a half pounds and live scopes the devil. And you're looking at them like, how, how? it's one thing if they were out there catching and, and I'm not throwing shade. I'm just saying like, it's yeah. hard for me because I, I see both sides. Like I said, I love fishing. I love the fishing industry. I have no hate towards any particular person. It's the arguments that I need to be, I need to see the argument in order for, to adapt to say, okay, that's a legit argument. Right. But I, w whatever happens, you can't stand up on stage and catch eight and a half pounds and tell me that live scopes the reason, right? Cause that's essentially what people are doing. And there's certain people, very few that are, that, that get up and they blame their performance on live scope. And it's like, okay, if you were catching 22 pounds on the bank and then not making a check, right. You could say, you know what, this is getting out of hand. Like I'm catching them on the bank and I'm getting beat by live scope. That's really not happening. Maybe it is, I, but I think there's a lot of, I, I don't know. I, I don't want to get too into it, but you know what I'm getting at. Like you, you can't, you can't, you can't lean on it as an excuse. That's right. for sure. Um, to me, perfect scenario. And this is just me as a fan. And I think speaking for all fans, uh, and I've said this on the show many times, I think it would be cool to have a mixed schedule, right? Like where every other event would be very cool to go, okay, well, this one, you got it. The next one we don't. And then uh, if there are eight events, seven events, whatever, uh, how many do you guys have? Eight all the way around? So even eight, nine. So it's an odd number. So my thing would be like, if you did five and four this year, then you invert it the next year. Yeah. Like, I Here's think that problem though, Luke, here, sorry to interrupt you. Here's no, my problem with that. The sport, right? we want to legitimize the sport of bass fishing and, and that's the goal for everyone, right? Like whether it's you, whether it's yeah. uh, Chase Anderson, right? We want to legitimize the sport, bring more audience. Like you gotta have consistency. I you do don't see the MLB going, okay, now you can use a aluminum bat and then now you can use a cork one, right? Like, I, I don't know if that's baseball. I'm not good with that stuff, but <laughs> yeah, you know what? And I'm from it's all wooden bats. It's all wooden bats. Right. But yeah. you know what I'm getting at, right? Like you can't have, if they're going to ban live scope, it needs to be banned and that's it. No, nah, I, I, would, I would agree with that. You know uh, what I mean? Like, cause then you're going to have so much, oh, well, this one, now he won that tournament with live scope. So asterisk, he mm -hmm. won that tournament. Uh, yeah, yeah. I see that. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I just, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know that. if that could work for well, the sport. I, and I think, and I think for the, for legitimizing the sport we've seen this with uh mlf and the bpt in the constant change 
and the constant shuffle. And then get, these are the rules and these are not the rules. And we fish 72 days and then, but we do this and the cuts are here. And the, like all of that definitely breeds into oh, what the hell's going on. Right. And even very, very, very dear friends of the dear friends, dear fans of the sport can't keep up. They don't know what's going on. So if the hardcore fan can't keep up, then a casual fan certainly isn't going to stop on FS1 and be like, well, last week they did this. You know what I mean? Like, I, I get that. That's a great point, man. Uh, I, the word B, the, the letters B, A, and N are almost as scary as FBD. Um, B, B, A, and N, the word ban, man, it's, it scares me. And um, I didn't like it when they banned the Alabama rig. I hated it. I was like, I don't, I, I don't agree with this at all. Um, because as we've seen in events that do allow it with only a certain number, of, like it doesn't dominate, like it just doesn't, it had its little time to shine. And then, uh, so I didn't, I didn't necessarily, now it was deadly for a yeah. little bit. And I get, I get why people were, were scared of it, I guess, but the word ban, man, it's a, uh, that's a slippery slope. I cannot express that enough. It's, it's exactly like I said, uh, earlier in the show that, uh, BPT anglers should be, they shouldn't be proud that Watson was suspended. Like there shouldn't be one guy in that group because that takes away your freedom, right? It does. Like if you can't speak up about what's going on. So I, I would say the same thing about banning it. Like who wants to give an organization that kind of power with something that's been out since 2018, right? Limited, yeah. limited, whatever, but I don't know. It's uh, and I know, listen, man, this is the hot button topic and I, and I've seen people, talking about this man people only do this for views they only talk about it like it's a real deal like it's as big of a story yeah that we've ever experienced in this whole shooting match man like yeah. it's a paradigm shift uh and and dude i think i saw more negativity between Redcrest and the and the classic comments just fans like nobody's happy for anybody anymore like yeah. the overwhelming amount of people that are just super negative and immediately just go there like it's disgusting. And then you see Randy Blanket and the fact that he's got a hundred thousand subs, you know, and look, much respect. Like, get it, dude. Get it, get it while the getting's good. But like people breed into that negativity. It's wild, man. It's it wild. Not this one thing. Cause I'm like, I don't care if you win on a crappie jig, Kyle Patrick. I will be <laughs> excited for you. Right. Or if you catch them on 37 pound line in a swim bait this long, I will be yeah. equally as excited and I will watch it regardless. Right. But I love the sport. Yeah. Yeah. And so one last thing I'll just say about like the, the, you know, new, new guys versus the old guys. I look, I think I talked about this on, um, on a freaking Pangrack with Pangrack. Um, Panger. Yeah. Panger. Uh, you know, I don't expect them to like welcome us with open arms. I yeah, mean, right. Like, dude, I was in, I was on sports teams. I played college soccer. I was in a fraternity. Like I know what it's like, the right? Pecking order. There's a pecking yeah, order. There's a pecking order. And look, I, I know there's a pecking order. Dude, for one second, if I ever try, like I have never once, like, for example, like, you know, when I'm at, I was at the bar, I, I was hanging out with um, at, at the classic and I was like, I got to buy these suckers drinks because they're the legend. They're the people I've watched. I'm not going to go in there and, you know, sit there like I'm like one of them yet. Right. Like I bought the boys drinks like they, there is a pecking order and that is how it's done. And I understand that. But I think sometimes it can get a little over the top, like people saying, other pros saying to other new pros, right? I, I witnessed this happen. You couldn't catch them without live scope. Yeah. Like, oh, come on, man. Like the guy, this guy's 22 years old. <laughs> give him, give him a break. Give him a break. You know, like, I don't know. It just seems that there, there are instances, like not like overall, like uh, the way it's happened. There are small instances that I look at and I'm like, I lost a little respect for that guy. Yeah. Like I, I lost a little respect for that guy. And like I was telling you before the show, I gained a lot of respect for Bill Lowen because after fork, I got a century belt. It was crazy. Like that is unbelievable. He came up to me and he shook my hand and he was like, Hey, good job, man. Right. Like no matter how hard we're competitors, we both love the sport of fishing. And he came up and he was like, he acknowledged it. Right. He was like, Hey, good job. And I, 
I hold him to he I he is someone I respect for class act. Right? He's class act. He's a class act. He came. It doesn't matter if he hates live scope or not. He came up, shook my hand like a competitor should. Every end of every sports game, there's always we shake hands, right? And that we don't need to do that in the bass. It's not like we need to all line up and shake hands and walk back. Especially, especially if like dudes are like, you know, I like it when the line in March Madness gets a little heated because there's something <laughs> going on under the goal. I love that. Like if somebody's cutting somebody off and then we all got to go, good game, good game, good game. At the end, somebody's <laughs> yeah, exactly. Grab somebody by the jersey. Yeah. Do something. You ever come in on me again, you piece of garbage? I'm here for that, dude. Yeah, yeah. We all got to get mic'd up too. Oh my God. Yes. Kyle Patrick, that's your next social media venture. Can you imagine? Uh, I can imagine people not having sponsors anymore. And <laughs> exactly. what, cause here's, here's the problem with the entire sport of fishing. And it's why I think low budget live struck a chord with so many people's because uh, right, wrong or different. Don't care what I say. Uh, and I do voice my opinion. There's a lot of PC things that get said on the way in stage that immediately backstage don't get said. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's life in general when the camera's on, right? A lot of people are like, right. "Well, I sure do love everything about all of this," and then they walk away and they're like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, "Exactly, exactly, <laughs> for sure." But it's amazing. Oh my goodness! All right, real quick, I've kept you forever. Uh, I appreciate you spending some of your Easter weekend with me. Let's talk classic, real quick, man. Like, I, I was. All your posts leading up to it, it, it did, man. It gave me chills. Like you won Lake of the Ozarks to get there through the opens, the win and you're in. I have no doubt that you'll be back next year. Uh, long way to go. A lot of events left, but you're off to a great start. It's not easy to make that classic. Everybody knows that. But you got a taste for it now. And I bet as hard as you work, you're going to work even harder to make sure you're there in Fort Worth. Yeah. Uh, what was the overall experience like, man? Because I just – I know it's a whirlwind. You come in way before the event starts for a pre-practice. It's a week out. You got three days to kind of sort it out, and then the whirlwind starts. So, kind of, kind of take me through your week and to end up with a top ten. Yeah, no, it's crazy. So, as we'll forget the fishing for a second, like all of the media and all of the excitement, the fans, like you know, the podcast leading up to it, like that. That I get so excited by that because. I've looked forward to classic week every day since I was 12 years old. Right. Like that's what, I, and the fact that I was fishing in it, I had to turn off my phone. I had to like put everything off because I'm fishing and I'm like, Holy smokes. I'm practicing for the best master classic. Like it, it's a surreal, it was such a surreal. The whole thing was a surreal experience for me. And it was hard to take that in and practice well and, and compete. That's what makes it so hard. Um, but, you know, just, I, I just tried to relax and that's sometimes hard for me, <laughs> but, <laughs> but it was just, it was, it was an amazing experience. And, you know, I found some fish. I did my classic, like, uh, I, this is what I do in tournament fishing. I find one good area, a area, a full area. And then I find like 15 or 20 spots, like a, a spot is a, a 100 yard or 50 yard zone where I feel like I can catch fish and it could be on rock. It could be on a, a stretch of docks. It could be. So I, in the back of a pocket, in the front of a pocket, I had all of it, but it were only tiny little areas. Maybe I got one or two bites. That's it. Or maybe even just one bite, or maybe even I thought it looked good. So mm -hmm. I found that one area that I ran down to, it was in a uh, drowning. And I started there. Right. So I, I found drowning and then I had like 20 sp spots all the way to the launch. And I do that because if, if my main area, area A, doesn't turn out, I can go try to refine a pattern. Because if I go through my spots and I catch one on rock and then I go to a dock and don't catch anything, I go to, you know, the back of a pocket of wood and don't catch anything. And then I go to my next rock pile and I catch one. Well, then I'm going to go hit my rock piles. So I basically did that on day two. Cause I struggled day two and I found a deal. I caught a six pounder on, on this area. And I was like, dang, that that's interesting. And I kind of had to go in and then day two, I just expanded on it and cracked the biggest bag of the tournament. So that was super cool oh, to gosh. see my process of practice pay off in a tournament like that clearly, like I've never had it pan out to where I've been able to really find 
new water throughout, um, you know, the, the tournament. But the practice, the, the classic really sets up for that because you get three days and then there's like a three day break and then there's one day that's only eight hours. So like, I, it just felt good to, to know that the way I practiced and laid out the lake fit well for, you know, fared well for me in that classic. That, that was big for me. Um, so that's like the fishing side, but then, you know, like the weigh in and having that curtain pull open, dude, God. like <laughs> I, I was surprised I was able to talk on stage, frankly. Dude, I can't imagine really like that moment yeah. where your name gets called and, and they roll you through the arena. Uh, that's a redneck dream, man. Getting dude. pulled in in your bass boat to arena with music player. And you kidding me? People screaming. Dude, I had Led Zeppelin like banging in my ear. Like, cool, dude. You know, it's, what was the you know, Zeppelin tune? What was what? The, what Zeppelin tune? Uh, frick. Uh, what what is it? I didn't get to see. I didn't watch it either. Oh, I'm blanking. Uh, oh god. Or no, it wasn't Zeppelin. It was uh Motley Crue. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. It was Motley Crue. Um, why am I blanking on the tune? I'm not good at music, dude. I just like listen to the lyrics and. I gotta look. The, I gotta look this up so I can tell you. Were you Doctor Feelgood? Were you Motley Crue? Doctor Feelgood? What? No, it wasn't Doctor Feelgood. It was. Uh... <sighs> God, now this is gonna bother me, dude. Um, You're like, I'm on here with a music guy. Uh, I know, I know, I know. Uh, Kyle Patrick. Uh, KG my heart. Sorry. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So no, it was it was just surreal, man. Like the whole the whole thing it makes you really want to go back like i didn't realize like i i always thought well of course i want to go back like I, I had the feeling like i want to go back right when i qualified i'm like i need to find a way back but when you go and you experience the media like all the hype then you have a good finish you roll through the you know arena you know you got the backstage stuff like all of it i'm like holy like i need to go back every year like if i miss a year i'm gonna be pissed <laughs> as you should be man like classics make careers qualify for that consistency with the total package that you got going on kyle patrick you're gonna do it my friend i appreciate you joining me dude it's uh it was an honor we, i don't know what we accomplished but i think it was a lot I think yeah was a lot. I, I had fun maybe i steered us off a little bit sometimes no 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 no. i do that i'm very capable of that but you know what i'm the host of my own damn show kyle yeah I exactly I can, but our two ADD minds getting together is dangerous. It is. We need, dangerous. To, we need to do. We need to do it again very soon, though, buddy. We need to do one in person. An in person with Kyle and Luke might be a five hour like Joe Rogan pod. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I oh, appreciate God. you, man, very much. Thank you so much for taking time out to do it. Y'all make sure you're following. Tag all your social media channels right here. Make sure you're following Kyle. He's a he's a he's a good dang follow. <laughs> Thanks, Luke. Appreciate it. Kyle, Kyle Patrick fishing everywhere on social media. Appreciate you, buddy. Thanks, Luke. Appreciate Thanks it. Thanks so much. Well, all right. That's all she wrote with Kyle Patrick. Great stuff right there from the Bassmaster Elite Series rookie. I appreciate him taking time out his busy Easter weekend to spend with us low lifers. Again, April the 8th next week will be the James Watson Spectacular, so you're going to want to tune in. It's going to be fun. We're going to break down the suspension and, and all, all of that jazz. I uh, appreciate each and every one of you tuning in every single week. means the world to me. I'm going to keep doing it as long as y'all keep showing up. So might do this until I'm 80. Who knows? Uh, this fishing world you get in, you never get out, and I'm okay with that. Uh, I'm going to take y'all out with some Bluxy Blues as always. And I'll see y'all next time. Town to two below. See you. I never could make it last. Spanish moss and Civil War ghosts. Well, I'm gonna leave them in the past. Any direction, Lord, I'll be fine. It don't matter, east or west. North, south, wherever the wind blows. I'm leaving those burdens in rest. This highway. Does not know my name and I don't care, no, I don't care. Heading my way for another place and I got three good tires and a spare. Just a white line gypsy getting out of Mississippi with just enough gas to